Hey guys, Lightsaber here with another video. This time we are doing Mythic Plus healing. The rest of the druids are super strong. They always have been in a Mythic Plus scene. Uh, this time I'm going to go over talents. What you should be using. What you should be prioritizing when you're trying to heal the dungeons. So you can get that Keystone Master and get that sick sweet mount. I'm going to be pushing keys in over the next couple of days. I'll be uploading some of those videos that we're completing some of the keys. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to go over the two legendaries that I switch between when I'm doing keys, as well as the talent choices. So let's uh, get into it, alright? Let's first go over uh, talents. So you're always going to be using Scenario Ward. Some people like Abundance. It helps a little bit of crit. This is amazing in raids. It's okay in dungeons. I mean, if you feel, don't have an extra hockey and you feel uncomfortable keeping this up, I want to explain later why this is so strong. But just right now, I mean, it's, it's your strongest hot, right? Life Bloom heals for uh, like 20% less and it's double duration over 15 seconds. So this is 20% stronger than your highest hot and it heals in half the time. It's insane. Super powerful hot. Amazing for putting on your tanks. And with the one legendary I'm going to talk about later, you can basically have 100% uptime on this on the tank. It's pretty nutty. But we'll get into it later. Uh, for big high keys, maybe you're doing Tyrannical. If your news is that bad, you can go bear form. Heal yourself for the second talent Troy. Um, I like wall charge. It's a lot more situational. You can leap out of stuff. You can leap to your teammates right when you're in human form. Wild charge acts like a life grip. So let's say you get hit by something and you're not able to go you know, shift into uh, your form and then jump right away. Well, if you're in human form and there's someone else to click to, you can push back by a mechanic. You can just instantly jump right back. That's going to save your life a couple times. So that and just the niche of having a little leap is a lot of fun. A lot of use for it in dungeons. That's what I play. Renew is also good if uh, you think you're okay with mobility. Renew is going to heal you for 30%. Just before you do this, make sure you go in bear form because your health pool is higher. More health pool means 30% heal is going to heal more. Make a macro. So it goes slash cast renewal slash use uh, spiritual healing potion. If you do those two together, it's going to be a big heal, like 50% of your health. It's going to be great. It's like a nice recovery. You can do it every two minutes, I think, with renewal. 1.5 minutes, even better. So if you want extra defensive, that's great. I don't think you need it. Maybe if you're pushing high, high keys, once you're getting to 17-18s, uh, that's the way to go. Uh, third talent throw, I'm using Balance Affinity. I used to be a huge, huge believer in Feral Affinity. I still think it's very amazing, especially if you're very Necro Lords out there who are doing more dots because you're using the Adaptive Swarm. Feral Affinity will help outweigh balance affinity for the fact that you'll have four dots instead of two so all your bleeds doing more damage with the adaptive swarm another 26 percent 30 percent it's going to be crazy right your bleeds are going to be going crazy baloney uh definitely do that but if you are not and you're a night fair like myself currently for pushing higher keys i would go with balance affinity uh the reason for this is because you have a crazy amount of damage bursts uh, under certain windows and if you're running with heart of the wild which is what you should always be running maybe mass entanglement but usually heart of the wild Every five minutes, so basically every boss, you go into a mechanic, you go into balance, uh, balance affinity, you instantly go into it. Oh, sorry, we'll switch it out here. And what's nice about this, when you have Heart of the Wild up with balance affinity, your star switch is instant cast. So I was going to hit with Heart of the Wild like 5, 6k, if it crits over 10k. And then if you're running with Elder Oath of the Elder Dragon, whatever it's called, you know what I mean, the one I always use. Here we go, now this one here. Oath of the Elder Druid. It's going to allow you to get Heart of the Wild for 10 seconds every minute. So every minute, you go into Moonkin form once you get into combat. You instantly do a Star Surge and pump some damage. You do line it up with your Trinket. If you have a DPS Trinket, you should have at least one, maybe two on uses. Use your on use. You pump for 10 seconds. Then you come on and you start healing. Amazing. And then every second one, so the second one, you have Heart of the Wild again after a minute. You use your Convoke. So... Every minute, you're almost like a combust mage, <laughs> but you're a wrestler druid. So every minute, you'll see the, the, the cooldown of it when you switch out. You're like, okay, it's up. Boomkin, shoot insta star surge, do some spells, do two of starfire, two of whatever, to get your moon to proc, and then cast the other one. You'll get about four or five spells off, and then you'll be done on the burst. Maybe do cast one star surge, because it'll still be a lot of damage, uh, and then come out and start healing. And usually, you have about, if you have all your hot up, you have about 10 seconds of window to pump damage before you have to come out and start healing. So it's very nice to be able to do, uh, especially depending on the encounters. Um, yeah, uh, 35 town, like I said, Heart of the Wild, you just do it for every boss. 30% more damage, even if you're, it just works for Feral Affinity as well, obviously. So it's just amazing. It's, it's your only rival. You can go Mass Entanglement if your group needs the extra CC, but you already have Vortex. Chances are you have a Hunter who's got Binding Shot. It's kind of an overkill, you don't really need it. 
there's a new group and they're just scared, you can use this, but you're gonna miss out a lot of free damage that you can do for your team when you're pushing higher keys. Next talent tree, guys. I see people using Tree of Life. Don't do that. Please. <laughs> it, this is not the play. The only time you run Tree of Life, I guess if you really want to, is in a raid situation. It's a powerful heal. Every three minutes, you become a, basically a god healer. But you oom um like crazy. Right? You're spamming regrowth. You shouldn't need this. I'm going to explain why you're not going to need this. So all the four is just, it's just amazing. right? Every 15 seconds, you get a big heal. Chances are, every 15 seconds, every 30 seconds, someone's going to get hit by something dumb. Or it's just a lot of damage. Or you can do a big wild growth after. 75% more on your biggest AoE heal that you have other than Trank. And it heals 6 people, you have 5 people in your party, like, that's amazing. <laughs> You're gonna be using it all the time, you're gonna get so much more value of this consistently over the rare situations where like maybe you didn't play it right, you didn't have enough hots on people, you didn't predict the damage because you're still learning the dungeon, you just spam tree. So if you're very new to dungeons, you don't know any of the mechanics, you have any, uh, any of the tanks who are explaining what's going on, Okay, maybe use it to be safe, but I highly, highly encourage you to stay away from this talent and go to soul. Cultivation has passive healing, but uh, the way some of the damage, especially like on these bigger, higher keys, you know, someone can lose like 60% of the health instantly. And it's just a mechanic, right? Someone just gets chunked. You have to heal them instantly. So if a huge swift bend into a big regrowth, they're topped. Cultivate's gonna do nothing. You're gonna have to make you have three or four regrowths. It's not gonna save anybody. Next talent here, Spring Blossoms is by far the best choice. Um, basically, it gives everybody an additional hot, right? Stacks with mastery. So you put your Spring Blossoms on the ground, and then you just got free healing, you know? A free hot that sticks. Doesn't heal a lot, but that's 10% more healing now if you have 10% mastery all the time, right? So you just drop this every time you go into a new pack, drop it, you're healing more. Uh, and now the final talent, and I don't know why Druids are not talking about this, <laughs> but Flourish is in insane okay you can do this on every prideful to guarantee nobody dies you can do it on every boss fight every big pull where there's a lot of healing going on usually the old flourish what it used to do is it just extended all your hots by eight seconds so the raid talent cool whatever but now it also increases all the healing effects of those hots by a hundred percent that's 10 hots right that's mastery is 10 percent that's equivalent to 10 hots so during that duration everyone is healing an insane amount absolutely crazy so I get it, Germination usually is great. If you have the Legendary for instance, it's the only time you'd ever run it. I don't think it's as value. It's it's nice, you get, maintain a, a light beam on yourself and on the tank. You get the extra healing out. Flourish is just better because of Pridefuls. So what you're going to do is whenever the Prideful gets around 30%, 40% health, everyone's taking a lot of damage, this is what you're going to do. You're going to drop your airflow on everybody. You're going to make sure everyone in your party has a Rejuvenation. That's two hots. Then you're going to Wild, uh, sorry, Wild Regrowth, and then Flourish. So all three hots are going to be ticking like crazy. If you really time it properly, everyone will have uh, like a regrowth as well. So at the end of your wild growth, you have seven seconds. You spam two or three regrowths out, and then you flourish it all. So that's four hots on everyone, and maybe one person might not have it, or two people might not have it. Probably ignore the tank because they have mitigation. So that's 40% more healing in everybody, and then they get 100% more healing from the flourish. They are not, no one's going to be taking damage for 8 seconds. You don't even have to waste your Trank. If you want to, you get an insane, like, this is more for raids, but some dungeon situations, like the last boss in Plaguefall, an insane amount of damage is coming out. I did it on Tyrannical last week on a 15. You're going to Trank, and once you get your Trank, sorry, all the way done, you're healing, okay, whatever. Then everyone should already have all the Rejuves. You're going to Wild Growth, Hot, spam your Regrowth on one, two persons, and then... Boom, flourish. You get the max trank as well. You get five hots. Trank is healing like insane amount. It's just incredible. Okay, that's like your maximum heal. You flourish straight at the end before trank expires and wild growth expires. So you get all the extra hots, and when they're at the last second, you just flourish everything. And my dudes, the healing output you can pump with this, especially in, in dungeons, also in raids, you'll never go back. It's it's so incredible. It's a 1.5 minute cooldown. You'd be using it all the time. Like it's just guys, run flourish, please. Um, yeah, so uh, that's basically what I wanted to show you. Oh yes, so the other legendary run. So if you're running, uh, I told you about using Oath of the Elder Dragon, right? So this is every minute you're like a little combust mage, mage just combust, then you're going to do your little baby combust, okay? <laughs> you go into combat, you usually go into moonkin form, you get your 30% more damage, you shoot an instant star, verge, star, star surge, and then you just pump your couple spells. When you also line this up with your trinket, whichever ones you have for on use. And the next one, if you're Night Fae, you use it with a Convoke, I've, seen, I've done like 7, 8k sometimes 
during that five second window with Heart of the Wild and Trinket up, and then you Convoke, especially if it's on a single target boss, no, no one else can get hit, everyone's at full health. Insane damage. <laughs> so definitely use that offensively if you can. Uh, but if you're finding yourself having a hard time healing, uh, there's a couple. There's the one that's the Wild Growth Legendary, but the one that I like using a lot now, I had so much fun with, I also use it, be using it in arenas for threes, is Verdant Infusion, right? So that's when you, you Swiftman someone, it no longer removes a hot on the person, and instead, all the hot that's on the person is increased by 8 seconds. That is crazy. I talked a little bit about before how you save so many globals. I didn't have a chance to test it. I finally got it now. And it is incredible. And the reason you do this, this is why you run Scenarian Ward as well. Listen to this nuttiness, okay? So, you uh, have Scenarian Ward in the tank, right? I'll put on myself, whatever. Alright, last 3 seconds. You have to take damage. I can't fully show you, but once you get hit... It's going to last for 8 seconds, super powerful hot, you're going to have all hots in the tank, you're like, okay, like, I need to do something to maintain these, you're going to Swiftman. Swiftman now will apply, make all your hots last an additional 8 seconds. This works for Scenarian Ward. So now your 8 second Scenarian Ward, that's insanely godly tier hot, it's equivalent to like 3 rejuvenations. My dudes. Now it lasts 16 seconds. And guess what? Swiftman. It's a 15 second cooldown. Which means you'll be able to swift and right at the end to get an additional 8 seconds. Then, if you're running Flourish, you get another 8 seconds. The cooldown of Scenario Ward is 30 seconds! That means you basically have consistently, all the time, you have Scenario Ward up. The whole time. Insane. Perma healing. So, please. <laughs> if you're using Flourish, which you should be, you have a snare one at the tank. The second he takes damage, he goes 8 seconds. You swiftman him with all the hots on him. You do the big swiftman. And then you flourish it. And then scenario ward is it's gonna last you'll have like 80 to 100 percent uptime in scenario ward on the tank for the whole dungeon. Biggest hot in the game. If you're running with the more healing talent for an infusion and you're running with flourish. It's incredible. So I hope this guys, hope you guys learned some tips uh, for healing priority. Obviously, you always want life bloom on your tank. Uh, and then scenario ward will be their second global cooldown. And then once they take damage, you want to do a quick swift command, it'll be the first thing. You'll have regrowth, rejuvenation, light bloom, and scenario ward on the target. Scenario ward will be last applied, so you get the full 8 seconds. Instant into a swift man. All I mean, tank isn't going to die for 8 seconds, you just leave him alone. Heal, do damage, that's when you go into moonkin form. Pump, right, whatever you can. And then you come out, more healing. For your pride falls, I'll go over one more time how to heal it. Uh, when it's 30-40%, they're going to start pumping a lot of damage. Your team will try to help you. Main thing is, if you have the debuff on you, right? The consensus in Mythic Plus, the big red thing where like, you know shoots out everywhere, you don't move. If it's on you, you don't move and everyone else will see where you are and they will position themselves around so, so they don't get hit. If you're moving the whole time trying to avoid and they're trying to move, people get hit and that's how people die. You see red on you, you don't move. It's everyone else's responsibility to move out of it. Uh, other than that, man, that's basically it. That's how you poon. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> my buddy. Um, yeah, so the Prideful, you have the healing over time from this on the ground, Spring Blossoms. You have Rejuves and everybody, right? Two Hots. You're going to regrowth as much as you can. Oh, sorry, your Wild Growth and spam about two or three regrowths on people. And the second your Wild Growth is just about done, then you pop Flourish. Boom! You are healing like a monster. GG. To 34 seconds, 8 seconds, no one's going to be taking any damage. You can spend a little bit of regrowth here and there, it won't really matter. Uh, and then, then you'll be dead, you get prideful. Everyone will be around 20-30%, like people will be weaker, but you don't have to blow any of the cooldowns. You save your Convoke for damage, and then you can save your Trank for the upcoming boss fight or the next pull you're about to do, uh, so you don't have to waste it uh, on the prideful itself. Uh, other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. hope you guys learned some cool tips on uh, how to heal in Mythic Plus. I'll be posting quite a bit of Mythic Plus content because it's a good push week this week. I'll be getting probably my Keystone Master, I'll be plus 15 to every dungeon. If you guys have any questions about healing as a Restoration Druid, uh, especially in, as you get into higher keys, feel free to ask me. You can hit me up on twitch.tv slash lifesavercollapse. Feel free to shoot a message in the comments below. If you want to see different content or anything else related to Restoration Druid, uh, you'll be seeing a lot more videos uh, for Mythic Plus over the next couple days. And then next week I'm going to be actually trying to seriously push arenas. I'm going to push for Duelists next week and we'll see how that goes. But uh, Hope you guys are having a good day, stay safe, happy new years, and we'll see you guys in the next video.